Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to our day four of Pep Talk with me, Coach LaShonda. I'm super excited to be with you today. We have been on a journey almost two months now where we walk, decree, declare every single day, Monday through Friday, the good things of the Lord over our lives and our family and our communities and everything that concerns us because we know life and death is in the power of the tongue. And so we want to be skillful in using our tongue because we know that we have to eat the fruit thereof. And so I don't know about you, but I'm not trying to eat the fruit of cursing. I'm not trying to eat poverty. I'm not trying to eat sickness. I'm not trying to eat any of that. So I'm not going to allow my tongue to speak those things. And I thank God that you are not going to allow your tongue to speak those things either. And so today, um, I'm, I'm, I'm real hyped up about uh, this pep talk because it has everything to do with you. You know, many times um, when we go through this, this, this journey called life, we have our ups, we have our downs. Uh, we have our good times, we have our not so good times, but in the midst of all of that, there's only one thing that is constant, and that is the Lord and His Word, because He promised us that He changes not. And so, it is up to you and I to make a decision as to how we're going to do this thing. And the only thing that gets God's attention is faith. The only thing that gets God's attention is faith. And so today... We are going to uh, really just dig in as to how we can really maneuver and max out in faith. Because the Bible tells us that once we become born again Christians, that God gives all of us a measure of faith. He gives us a measure of his faith. So, you know, when God says the faith of a mustard seed can tell a mountain to do this and it must obey. He knew exactly what he was talking about because he knew he had already given you and I a measure of his faith. Now, it's up to you and me to grow that faith. It's not his responsibility to grow the faith. It's our responsibility to grow that faith, right? And so that's why the Bible says in two different, one verse it says he want to take us from faith to faith. And then in another verse it says he want to take us from glory to glory. His desire is for us to grow and stretch our faith. And so to grow and stretch your faith, it requires an assignment. It requires something. For example, um, you may use your faith to get a parking spot. I, I've used my faith to get a parking spot. Then you may stretch your faith and use your faith to purchase a home, right? And then you may use your faith and stretch it so that you can purchase a vehicle. And then you may use your faith to stretch it so that now you can purchase a home and a vehicle debt free, not having to take out a loan. That is faith. God want you and I to stretch our faith. He want us to go from faith to faith and glory to glory. That's a weird looking question. And so today we want to talk about faith, okay? And so thank you so much for joining me uh, this day. Uh, if you haven't already done so, do me a favor and just share the broadcast. And those of you who have been with us for a month, you know God always loved to set us up and give us something to really ponder on so by the time we get ready to say these decrees that we're already ready and so here's the thing I want you to know as you are going through this journey called life you and I we will have to learn how to be our best our best cheerleaders just just to be honest if you wait on someone else to pump you up and get you to the place where you need to be in your faith you may be waiting forever because they may not ever show up and so you and i have to learn how to become our best cheerleader we have to realize 
that we can't wait around for other people to constantly be our inspiration, right? We have to discover who God is for ourselves and magnify his attributes. Did you hear what I said? We have to learn who God is for ourselves and then magnify his attributes in relation to what it is that we are going through. Let me give you an example. I remember um, this had to be maybe, uh, let's say 24, no, 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 20, maybe 2010, 2010, right? Um, I was working at this, at this job. And one day I came into work and the owner, <clears throat> they were in a place where they was going to have to shut down this branch that was in the Kansas City area. And I happened to be working at that branch. And so when I came in that morning, um, when I came in that morning, you know, I found out that I no longer work there. <laughs> I found out that I no longer worked there, right? And so they gave me a check for the time, the work I had done, the time that I still had on the books, and they um, paid me vacation and all this stuff, right? So it was a very nice size check. But the reality is, I no longer work there anymore. And I remember when I walked out the door. I remember when I walked out the door, these were the words I said, Lord, help me to deal with this situation the same way Job dealt with his. And what was I talking about? I was like, Lord, help me go through this situation with my head held high. Help me go through this situation still believing and trusting in you. That's what I meant. I didn't want to I didn't want to become fearful. And if you notice that Job dealt with a lot. Good morning. Job dealt with a lot. Right? Job dealt with a lot. But as the Bible tells us, not one time did he curse God. Not one time did he curse God. And so I remember having um the check that they had given me and the unemployment, right? But in my head I was still wondering, like, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do this, God? How are we going to do this? And I remember standing in my living room, and, you know, I was talking to God. And a few days had went past, and I was just talking to God. And I was talking to him um, because I was a little worried and concerned, but I didn't allow it to come out my mouth. And this is what the Lord said to me. He said, you haven't called me your provider yet. He said, you haven't called me your provider yet. You know, I have been praying, Lord, help me. Lord, guide me. Lord, uh, maintain me. All this stuff. But the Lord simply said to me, you haven't called me your provider. <sighs> Man, you don't know how much, how that helped me. Because what he was telling me was, I want to be your provider. But I need you to call me your provider. I need you to call me your provider. And so I say that. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for even reminding me of that. What I'm saying is when you need encouragement, that's when you want to know who God is. You want to know his attributes because those are the attributes that you may need to call him at that time. I want you to think about this. And, 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 and it makes so much sense why God said that. Remember when he told Moses, when Moses was like, man, when I tell you the Holy Spirit ain't no joke because I did not, I didn't study this right here, but he, he's, he's giving it to me as I'm talking. Remember when, um, when Moses was given the assignment, remember I started off with assignment. Moses was given the assignment. And the first thing he said was, 
Who do I tell them sent me? Right? Who do I tell them? And God simply said, tell them that I am. And when I first read that, I was like, what sense does that make? I don't understand that. What is I am? I am that I am. I, I don't understand it. I don't understand that. But what was amazing now that I know fast forward, God is saying, I am who you need me to be. And he, I am who you need me to be. What a revelation. So when God said, you haven't called me your provider, at that moment, I started saying, God, you are my provider. I need you to be my provider. You are my provider. Because he said, I am the great I am. I am who you need me to be. Do you need me to be provider? I'll be your provider. Do you need me to be comforter? I'll be your comforter. Do you need me to be healer? I'll be your healer because I'm the great I am. I am whatever you need me to be. I am whatever you need me to be. Do you need me to be an ever-present help in times of trouble? I am. Do you, me, do you need me to be the lover of your soul? I am. Who do you need me to be? That's what the Lord was saying to me. Who do you need me to be? And he know that at that time, I didn't really know him like I know him now. So he said, you haven't. He told me what to call him. He said, you haven't called me provider. You haven't called me provider. So he told me what to call him. Gotta tell you what to call him. Right? How amazing. How beautiful is our God. And so, I had, and you have to, and we must discover who God is for ourselves and magnify his attributes in relation to whatever we are facing. Right? Whatever you're facing. And so, you have to learn to magnify God for who you need him to be. You know how my nickname, I don't think I ever told nobody my nickname. It's, it's a cute little nickname. Maybe it's my nickname because I was born on October 31st. I don't know. But my nickname is Pumpkin. Pumpkin, Pumpkin, however you want to say it. That's my nickname, right? <laughs> I've had that nickname since elementary school, being raised with my granny in Charleston, Mississippi. So my nickname is Pumpkin. Or pumpkin right but God has nicknames too he has nicknames as well that we can call up on him right let me give you some of his nicknames okay and feel free to type this into the comments let me give you some of his nicknames because maybe you didn't know this was a nickname of God so you need to know he's called Elohim the creator mighty and strong right you can find that in Genesis 17 and 7 Jeremiah 31 and 3 he's called his one of his nickname is called El Shaddai so let me go back to Elohim the creator the mighty the strong where do you need God to show up and be strong in your life because the Bible says as your days so is your strength so he said he will exchange your weakness for his strength so where do you need Elohim to show up in your life call him that he said he's El Shaddai almighty God or the God who specialized in doing the impossible <laughs> look at here every single day we might need to be calling on God El Shaddai <laughs> El Shaddai because he specializes in the impossible why because the Bible says that with God all things are possible so without God yeah they impossible but with God, they're possible. So, he's our El Shaddai. And we're going to get to our declarations, but we need to set this thing up, right? And so, Adonai, he's just Lord. He's just Lord. He's ruler. Where do you need him to rule in your life, 
in your situation? Where do you need him to give the final ruling? You know, like judges, they give the ruling. You know, what is your ruling? What is your judgment? What is the final say? What, what do you need God to, to rule in your life? Yahweh or Jehovah. That's a nickname of the Lord. Ever present near to those who call on him. So when you say Jehovah, you are saying, God, I know you're present right here. You're ever so close to me. When you say Yahweh, you know how sometimes people say they feel alone? Well, you don't ever have to feel alone because Jehovah is near. Jehovah is present. Yahweh is near. Yahweh is present. Come on, let's get skillful in using the word of the Lord. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. See, he knew he couldn't tell me, well, you haven't called me Jehovah Jireh. I ain't know nothing about no Jehovah Jireh. <laughs> but he did know I knew the word provider. And he said, you haven't called me your provider. So God is like, I need you to call me provider, ma'am. I need you to call me provider. I see your situation, but who do you need me to be? So Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. Have you called him Jehovah Rapha yet? Have you? Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner, as in victory. When you call him Jehovah Nisi, that is the Lord your banner. Meaning that he is the warrior. He is the victor. He covers you. There is no loss. So if you're in a battle right now, you call him Jehovah Nisi. I need you to be Jehovah Nisi in this situation. Right? Jehovah Kadesh, the Lord who sanctifies or make holy. Maybe you got a situation that is ungodly, unholy right now. Maybe you got a loved one is unholy. Call him. I need Jehovah Kadesh to step in this situation and turn all unholiness and unrighteousness to a holy situation, God, that you can get the glory out of. See, this is a building your faith. This is building your faith in the God who said, I'm the great I am. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord of our peace. Where do you need peace? Because strife is taken over. Strife is taking over. Confusion is taking over. God said, well, call me Jehovah Shalom. Erect Jehovah Shalom in that situation. And Jehovah sick in you, right? The Lord, our righteousness. Our righteousness. Okay? Now, let me tell you, those are just a few. Um, Jehovah Roha, right? The Lord, our shepherd. Let me tell you how powerful that is. Because when the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want. So if you are in want, call on Jehovah Roha and say, I need you, Lord, because you are my shepherd and I shall not want. Jehovah and Elion, El Elion, right? The most high God, meaning that there is nothing above him. There's nothing higher than him. Lord God, any imaginations and thoughts that try to contend with you. I call in El Elyon. And so this is not a comprehensive list, but I would say to you, look up the many different attributes of the Lord so that you can begin to be really skillful in using the word of the Lord in your situation. Be very skillful. Know who he is and what he can do. And so again, who do you need God to be in your life? Call on him. And that is honestly how you demonstrate your faith in his ability to perform the impossible in your life. Remember, faith gets God's attention. He says it's impossible to please him without faith. So when you start calling on his name, when I started calling on God as my provider, what I was saying to him, God, you are my source and you are my supply. You are my provider. <clears throat> that showed that I have faith in him to be just that and let me tell you when I went through that situation there was nothing lacking <clears throat> nothing missing and nothing wanting in my life during that time frame nothing missing nothing lacking nothing wanting I didn't have to cut back I didn't have to tell my young son 
no son you can't have that when we went to the store good morning because he was one that every time we went to the store he felt he needed to get something no i i was always able to tell him yes yes to him and yes to me because the lord showed up and he provided he provided and let me tell you i didn't even know him then like I know him now, but he came through. He honored his name. Y'all, he honored his name. Think about what Psalms 23 says. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Right? He restores my soul. And it goes on to say, for his name's sake. For his name's sake. He honored Jehovah Jireh for his name's sake. His name is on the line. His name is on the line. His name was on the line with Moses. Because had he not delivered them from Pharaoh, the people wouldn't have never believed in him. <clears throat> so he honors his name. So when we use his name and believe him to do what his name say he can do, that's showing him faith. And he moves on faith. All right? Declaring <clears throat> how big your God is builds your faith in his supernatural ability to perform miracles in your life. Let me say that again. Declaring how big your God is builds your faith in his supernatural ability to perform miracles in your life. So as your faith increases, his power flows. The higher your faith the more of his power flows into your situation. Great faith, great flow. Great faith, great flow. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? All right? Keep your eyes on God, not your situation. Because he said if you keep your mind stayed on him, he would give you a peace. And he gives us a peace that surpasses all understanding. And so I'm here to tell you that you cannot defeat Goliath with your mouth shut. That's what I'm here to tell you. You cannot defeat Goliath with your mouth shut. I know a lot of people focus on not saying anything negative, And that's good. But to not say anything is not good at all. You have to say something, all right? And so listen, the Bible says, I am God and there is none like me. And so declaring the end and the result from the beginning. Do you know that? You can find that in Isaiah 46 um, <clears throat> verses 9 and 10. God says that he declared the end at the beginning. And so you've heard it in the secular world where it is said, um, start with the end in mind. Start with the end in mind, right? So when a person starts college, they wanna, they wanna keep their eyes on the graduation day, right? You're starting college, but your thoughts are already at graduation. So that's what God is saying. He's saying, I start with the end in mind Isaiah 46 9 and 10 and God wants you and I to do what he does because in Ephesians 5 and 1 he says imitate him and so God wants you to do what he does God wants me to do what he does declare the end result of what you are believing for before you ever see any sign of it happening so you got to declare you are a billionaire before you get a dollar. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got to declare your healing before you even go to the doctor. 
right? You got to do that. Your mouth and my mouth contains power like no other weapon. Your tongue, the words of God, is more powerful than any atomic bomb. So when you look at the story of David and Goliath found in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17, the Bible tells us that Goliath said something to David, right? Goliath said something to David. And you need to know that the devil will speak to you the same way that Goliath spoke <laughs> to David. Okay? So what is your defense? What is my defense? What is our defense? Speaking back to him. If he got the nerve to talk, then you better talk back to him. He spoke to Adam and Eve. They listened. But he spoke to Jesus. And Jesus spoke back. He spoke to David. David spoke back. Notice that David killed Goliath with his words before he ever released one stone. Check that out. David killed Goliath with his words before he released one stone. Listen to what he said. Then, And I want you to count. This is what I want you to do. I already know the number. But I want you to count how many things David said to Goliath before he ran to him. Check that out. After David said what he said, he ran to Goliath. He didn't wait for Goliath to come to him. So listen. Then David said to the Philistine, Philistine, sorry, you come to me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin, but I come, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Let me tell you why that's so important. Because the Lord of hosts is the Lord of the heavenly army, the heavenly angelic army of God. So do you realize what David knew right then? He knew he wasn't alone. Oh, this one today. He knew he wasn't alone. He said, I come to you. I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Look, he called God. He knew he needed an army. Goliath was skilled in battle. David was a little 17-year-old puny teenager. He hadn't been skilled in war and in battle. So guess what? David called God who he needed him to be. God said, I am the great I am. So David said, well, right now, Lord, I need you to be the Lord of hosts, meaning the Lord of your heavenly army, your angelic army. I can't just go up against uh, Goliath by myself. I need your angels to fight with me. That's look and look what happened. That's the power of calling God by his attributes. So check it out. He said, but I come to you. So David was saying, you come to me in all of these natural weapons, right? The sword, the spear, the javelin. I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Because David was saying, because that's all I need. So check it out. The God of, so let me say it again. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. The God of the ranks of Israel, whom you have defiled. This day, the Lord will, check it out, deliver you into my hands. I will smite you, cut off your head, and I will give the corpse of the army of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. David did not sound like no punk, right? And you may say, well, dang, David, cut the man's head off. Why are you coming at me so strong? Well, Goliath came strong at him. So David, like, I'm going to come strong back. Eye for an eye. You know, that's the Old Testament. Eye for an eye. <laughs> so, it's, so 
Goliath came strong at David, David is like, yep, you ain't about to punk me because I got the Lord on my side. David told him about five things that he was going to do to him before he picked up one stone. David spoke to his giant, the enemy, before he ever released the stone. He prophesied his enemy's death with the words of his mouth. You and I cannot defeat our giant with our mouths shut. Whatever giant it is in your life right now, your emotions, your weight, your money, your marriage, loneliness, anxiety, stress, depression, fear, whatever it is that tries to intimidate you, demonstrate your faith by speaking the word of God. Demonstrate your faith by speaking the word of God. Y'all, I ain't go up that hill today. I was like, I go down it. I ain't going up that hill today. I ain't huffing and puffing today. So listen, let's go ahead and jump into some declarations. I hope, I hope you got something from that because I know I did today. I know I did today. I pray you got something from that. And I pray that um, it soothes you. Turn it around. I pray that it soothes you. So let's do these declarations, okay? So those of you who have been with me, you know I'm going to say the declaration. Then I want you to speak it out of your mouth. And those of you who are new, do the same thing. Don't allow it to just sit in your heart or, or say it in your head. Allow, allow it to come out of your your mouth. So let's let's do these declarations, okay? I am victorious in life. And like I said yesterday, whatever follows I am starts looking for you. So victory is now looking for you since you have decreed that you are victorious. I am more than a conqueror. I am a world overcomer. I overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. That's in Revelation. Notice the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. You can't get out of speaking if you want victory. You will have to speak. My faith is the victory that overcomes the world. The favor of God surrounds me like a shield. That's one of my favorites in Psalms, Psalms 512. The favor of God surrounds me like a shield. I am, let me say, I have favor in the sight of all men. I have favor in the sight of all men. Listen to this. God goes, phone ringer. God goes before me, making the crooked places straight and opening doors that no man can shut. See, if you truly believe that, you can't even believe then. Let me say this. If you truly believe that, if you truly believe that God goes before you, making the crooked places straight and opening doors that no man can shut, that alone should stop you from thinking that somebody is going to railroad you out of money, railroad you out of a promotion, railroad you out of anything. Because God has already went before you to make that crooked place straight. And he has open doors that can't nobody shut. So I don't care. If you were going for a promotion and they gave it to somebody else, but the Lord told you that that's your promotion, guess what? He going to move that person out the way. He going to move them out the way. They might quit because they got a better job. They might, they might resign, whatever the case may be. Or you may, you may be their boss. So they may have the position you want, but you get a, better promotion and now you are their boss if God has called for your promotion it is going to happen and so if you really believe that God has went before you and made crooked paths straight 
and open doors that nobody can shut. You don't even have to get irritated, frustrated, uh, discouraged, or anything about what somebody else do. Because no one trumps God. All right? I had to put that in there. I had to put that in there. And, and understand, I'm talking to myself as I talk to you. I have the mind of the Holy Spirit, which is life and peace. I am spiritually minded. So now spiritually mindedness is looking for you. I have the mind of Christ. I am a believer and not a doubter. I hold fast to my confession of faith. You can't be wishy-washy. One day you talk in faith, the next day you talk in doubt. You can't do that. The Holy Spirit leads me and guides me. Listen, when the Holy Spirit leads you and guides you, you're on the right track. Here's some more. I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I have been created by God to prosper and make a difference in this world. If you believe that, start looking. Start looking. Let me tell you all, I can't say a whole bunch about it right now. But what I can say is that yesterday, um, yesterday, an amazing opportunity was presented to me and my husband for us to do something together. Like my husband does his thing, I do my business, right? But this is something that we get to do together. And and it comes, yeah, it, it comes with something, a little something, something, okay? And so I have been created by God to prosper and make a difference in this world. Let's keep going. I am a success. I am the head and not the tail. I am above only and not beneath. I am blessed coming in and blessed going out. I am being transformed by the renewing of my mind. So transformation and renew mind renewal is now looking for you. I let the word of God dwell in me richly. I am meditating in the word day and night, making my way prosperous and dealing wisely in all affairs of my life. Notice that's in Joshua, okay? One in eight. The Bible says when you meditate day and night. Now meditation could be like, for example, after we get off the live, you can begin to really meditate on what God spoke to you today doing this live and just really think about it and ask God, Lord, give me deeper revelation on what LaShonda was saying today. That's meditating. And the Bible says that when you meditate on his word, you make your way prosperous. It didn't say God make your way prosperous. It says you make your way prosperous. So if you are ready for your way to be made prosperous, then go ahead and start meditating on the word of God day and night. It's as simple as that. Think about it. If you calculate what you do during the day, you get up, maybe you watch TV, maybe you listen to the radio, maybe you get on social media, how much of that time could you take away and and give it, lend it to meditating on God's word? Okay, let me keep going. I may not say them all. The blessings of the Lord are overtaking me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I take my shield of faith. And I quench every fiery dart of the wicked one. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. I expect the best in life. I am in the perfect will of God. My faith overcomes anything that tries to overcome me. So here are some more attributes. Remember we were talking about those nicknames of God. Can I give you some more? Can I give you some more? 
and you can write these down in the comments on a piece of paper whatever but pick out what you need him to be first right and then you can move to the others so here are some attributes of the Lord that you can declare father God you are my restorer Psalms 23 and 3. You are the lifter of my head. Psalms 3 and 3. That's a good one for people who are dealing with depression. If you are dealing with depression, that's a good one. You are the lifter of my head. Because see, if when your head is not lifted, it's like this. Y'all see my bonnet? Don't say nothing. Y'all see my bonnet? When your head is when you when your head is not lifted, it's down. And there's something that has lowered your head and you better believe satan has his hand in it and so you say god you are the lifter of my head that's psalms three and three if you're dealing with depression that is a good one you are my hiding place psalms 32 and 7. you are my hiding place if it feels like oh holy spirit thank you if it feels like you're being attacked from your left and your right, before you and behind you. And you just need God to hide you so nobody can see you. He's your fortress and your refuge. Say, Lord, you are my hiding place. That's Psalms 32 and 7. You are my wisdom. 1 Corinthians 1 and 24. You are my shield. Psalms 33 and 20 you are my helper John 14 and 16 you are my counselor I love this Psalm 16 and 7 because the reality is we don't know what God knows I remember I would always say this Lord if you don't tell me what to do I am going to mess this thing up. I promise you. What was I asking God? I was asking him to be my counselor. Because I don't know what to do. But I know you do. And I was saying that to God before, before I knew who he really was. I knew of him. I didn't know him. But I did say... If you don't tell me what to do, I'm going to mess this thing up. So you are my counselor, Psalm 16 and 7. And listen, if you just joined us, sweetheart, go all the way back to the beginning when we end this broadcast. Because it's nuggets from the beginning all the way to this point, and we have more. You are my everlasting father. You know, I lost my mom. And my father is really not present. So, one could consider me an orphan. Right? An orphan in this world. But I have an everlasting father. I have an everlasting father. And I don't want for nothing. Because he's my father and he's my shepherd. He's my counselor when I need him. He's my comforter when I need him. He's my security when insecurity tries to show up. You are my peace. I got to see this scripture. My eyes, my eyes got a little ocean in it. You are my peace. Ephesians 2.14 And even though you know, I miss my mom. I really do miss my mom. But God is my peace. He's my peace. And he does things to let me know that he is present. And whenever my heart may feel broken because she is not here, he lets me know that I'm near to the brokenhearted. You are my healer. Malachi 4 and 2. You are my healer. You are my hope. Psalms 
71 and 5. You are my fortress. Psalms 18 and 2. You are my deliverer. Psalms 70 and 5. You are my strength. Isaiah 12 and 2. And you are my rewarder. Hebrews 11 and 6. So, when you feel that, Lord, I've, I've been dealing with this. And I've been striving to stay strong, Lord. I've been taking care of everybody. I've been being the rock for everybody. Because they look to me. Lord, I need you to be my rewarder. I need you to be my rewarder. You said, Lord, that there is a great reward for this sacrifice. I need you to be my rewarder, Jesus. I need you to show up now in my life as a rewarder. Call on him. Because when you call on him like that, that's faith. That's faith. That's faith. That's faith. All right. So today, our pep talk was all about faith. It was all about faith. It's all about faith. <sighs> Woo. I know you do, Marquita. I know you miss your mommy. <sighs> I thank God that we are not alone. Hallelujah. There's a song our church used to sing, and I know we're going to start back singing it. And I ain't going to try to sing it right now, but it goes, um, Hallelujah, salvation and glory. Hallelujah, salvation and good honor and power. Uh, yeah, Marquita, as you can see, I probably do already forgot the words. To the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is mighty, for the Lord our God is omnipotent, yes, the Lord our God, He is wonderful. Don't even matter what we deal with or what we see, He is wonderful, He's wonderful. And all praises is due to him. Right? All praises is due to him. So y'all know, y'all got to share this one. Because this one, boy, I might say this is one of the best. I don't know. <laughs> um, because he really, I believe he really showed up for all of us today. In a way that we all needed him. And, you know, when, when... I know I shed tears. Um, it's gratitude tears, right? Because he, he reminds me that he's here. He reminds me that, girl, I'm walking right with you. I got my angels with you. My husband would say, be careful on your walk. And I get it. But I'd be like, man, my angels ain't about to let nothing happen to me. <laughs> they got me flanked all over. I wish, you know what I'm saying, but I don't test the Lord in crazy ways. I ain't about to jump off a building and see if gravity exists. And yeah, I ain't even do that. Y'all. Oh, my God. Y'all. Uh, okay, I'm going to try to show it to you. It's a red bird. Y'all know what I... Oh, if, oh, it's flying away. I saw it. I saw it, so you all. Oh, he's still there. Oh, I'm gonna try to get a picture of it. So, see, this lets me know God is with me. Y'all see it? Look, look. Do y'all see that? Okay, I gotta get back to where I was. Turn my thing around. My mom. Oh, look. Oh, my God, it's staying there. 
Okay, just flew. I, I can't take a picture. I normally like taking pictures, but I'm live, so I can't take a picture. My mom loved red birds. I know it's a formal name of it, but my mama called it a red bird, so they gonna forever be a red bird. A red bird. And if you look up, even in Google, um, red birds, aka cardinals, they they represent a messenger from heaven. That's what you know it said. And somebody in heaven is thinking of you, right? I'll take it. I'll take it right in my path today. I'll take it. I'll take it. I know that God is with me, like I just said. He lets me know that he is present. And so I have, I can dry my face and not be sad because my mom isn't here. I can just say God is present. God is present, right? So, that was a cool, wasn't it? That was pretty cool. <laughs> Y'all got to see it. Oh, man, that was pretty cool. I'll forever have this video, too. So, yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Angela, for putting that in there. This will forever because I never delete my videos, so they have to stay on Facebook forever. And I'm going to download this one and put it on my YouTube so it can be in multiple places, too. Um... Yeah, y'all, so I guess I'm done. <laughs> Good morning. I guess I'm done for today. But what a great way to end the live with seeing that red bird. So, right in my path. So, listen. Know that the Lord is for you. Know that he is with you. And right there, he showed me he's my comforter. He showed me that right there. I'll never leave you or forsake you, girl. Girl. <laughs> so, trust God. Have faith in God. Call him who you need him to be in your situation. And then let your faith come out and declare the ending at the beginning. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God heal you. May God prosper you. May God bring joy in every area of your life. Peace in every area of your life. Satisfaction in every area of your life. May God bring praise in every area of your life and worship in every area of your life. May God give you wisdom in every area of your life. Give you his counsel and his might and his strength in every area of your life. That is my decree that's my ending at the beginning for you and your family and for me and my family and may god prosper you so that wealth and riches is always in your home and your righteousness endures forever in jesus name amen and amen and amen i'll see you tomorrow okay